How easy is it to make one of these into one of these? Follow along and find out. Hey everybody, it's Arl from Arl House. You ever get in your head that you just need something and it's a good idea to purchase? Well, guess what? That's exactly what I decided two years ago when I bought this huge drill press. And honestly, to date, I have not used it a lot. But today, we're gonna change all that because I'm going to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, and see how long and how feasible it is in order to make some greasable style pins out of a bolt. So I don't know if it's been like this for you guys, but it's not the easiest thing to find these pins if they don't come with the attachments to have the, um, the grease fittings and have them all set up already. So I purchased a pair that um, we're gonna now see you know, how difficult it is to do this and uh, is it worth it? And um, we're just gonna do it for the heck of it. So let me tell you where we're at. So this pin that was already pre-done has a cross drilled section here for the grease. It has um, been recessed here and you've got the Zerk fitting there. Now the Zerk fitting is a um, 10 millimeter threaded Zerk with a one pitch. Um, I have a great set of Irwin taps and dies, but unfortunately, it does not have a, um, a tap for a, for a 10 millimeter uh, one pitch. So what I've decided to do is I, from my Zerk set, I found a nine millimeter, which has got the correct, um, which I do have a correct tap for and uh, with the right thread, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna use that. I'm going to use this three quarter in order to, I guess you'd say chamfer or uh, recess this. Then we're going to use uh, a one quarter in order to, it's the closest, so it gives me a little bit uh, of material in order to use the tap uh, for this, and then we are going to use a 732nd to do the cross drill. I'm going to set you guys up so you can follow along with what I'm doing and we'll go from there. All right, the first thing we're going to do is grind this down nice and flat. Just going to use the bench grinder, so uh, let's do it. All right, we got that done in relatively quick order. Now let's set ourselves up over by the drill press where the majority of work is gonna be done. All right, so I set up the, uh, the drill press. Um, the best way I figured I know how to do it is I just put the, uh, the nut on down there in order to use the bolt, I mean, to use the vise. Um, and uh, we have it all set, so let me put you guys over here and uh, Let's see how this does. I do have a stop, I should say. I've got the stop built in here so that it'll only go down a little bit, and if I need to adjust it, I will. Guys, I made all kinds of stupid mistakes with this. I should never have gone this big to begin with. I should have made a pilot hole, and I'm not going to bore you guys with all the iterations of me doing this wrong, so we're going to skip ahead here. All right. Let's get back to it. This should go a bit faster. So you guys can see that I drilled out or chamfered the um, the head of the bolt. And now I'm going through with the pilot hole in order to go as far as I can uh, for the grease channel. So I went through a couple of iterations of this as well. I didn't think I went far enough down in order to meet the long channel Eventually I got there and that's what you guys are seeing.
Oh, there we go. I felt it. Theoretically, I should be able to uh, blow some air through here. Well, after all that, I made a stupid of stupid mistakes because I had these, I had the 10 millimeter one next to the nine mil, or not next to the nine millimeter one. I couldn't figure out why my hole wasn't big enough. So what did I do? I went up a size just far enough for the threads only to realize it's the wrong one. So where does that leave me? Well, that leaves me with we're gonna do the 10 millimeter with the 1.25 thread pitch, and then we are going to very gingerly get this in, um, and uh, maybe use a little lubricant to try to, even though the threads are not gonna be quite right, we are just trying to get it in there so that we can push some grease. So let's see if this works out. Otherwise I botched the whole thing up, which would be fantastic. All right, we'll see how we do here. Now I got the uh, the 10 millimeter with the 1.2. So par for the course, I lost the footage of being able to show you guys the greasing of the completed pin. However, through the wonders of AI, I was able to recreate it for you. Not really. All right, so what's my take on this? Would I do this again? Well, I actually am gonna do this again, and that's because I've got another one of these that I have to do. Um, would I do it in lieu of buying these already pre-done? Absolutely not. If you can find them, save yourself the time and a headache. Uh, but if you have a setup like me and um, you're coming up against not being able to find them already with the Zerk fittings on them, well, it can definitely be done. Just, um, you know, account for some time. In my case, I can get this done a lot faster next time around because I've already gone through it once. Um, but outside of that, it's probably not worthwhile <laughs> as an endeavor. Uh, as always, guys, leave the comments. These give me ideas on what to do. Please hit subscribe. We're growing slowly. Um, soon I should be able to post in the community section in order to have polls and so forth. And I definitely want to do that to get more ideas from you guys. So thanks again. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.